Our coverage of the deadly Oxford High School shooting continues. A lot of people on social media shared a TikTok video showing what appeared to be students taking cover from the suspected shooter yesterday. People posted online saying the shooter was trying to get into the classroom, saying that he was a police officer. But police now tell us it was in fact a plain clothes police officer trying to get into the class, not the suspect. 13 on your side's Kirk Montgomery, Montgomery joins us once again live from Oxford Township with more. Yeah, this video was shared hundreds of times on TikTok, but police say don't believe everything you see on social media. They caution that it was not what people made it out to be. A video was disseminated rather wild, wild, widely that showed the students in a classroom and depicted someone knocking on the door and pretty much the allegation was that that was the suspect. We've now been able to determine that was not the suspect. <clears throat> Excuse me, more than likely it was one of our plainclothes detectives and he may have been talking bro in a conversational manner to try to bring them down from the crisis to say, come on bro, let's get out of the classrooms, let's get you outside, let's get you that kind of comment. The suspect we have now confirmed by analyzing all of the video from the time it began to the time we took him into custody never knocked on a door. Now, police also said they had heard about a posted threat back on November 11th, but they cautioned that did not deem to be credible at all. It was not intended for Oakland County. In fact, it was from Georgia and it was completely cleared. I want to bring my colleague Carla Byron back in here. And Carla, the Oakland County prosecutor says the parents of the suspected shooter may be up for charges. Is, is that possible? Right. So uh, prosecutor Karen McDonald couldn't go into specific details as far as why uh, the parents can potentially be charged. She, she, there's an open investigation, right. so she is limited uh, in the information that she can share at the moment. However, she did make some comments about responsible gun owners making sure that their guns are secured and that they don't end up in the hands of potentially the wrong people. We know that the suspect's father bought the handgun used in the shooting on Black Friday, so four days before the shooting. Both the prosecutor and the sheriff could not go into specific details as far as how the suspect got his parents' gun. So the question is, did he steal the gun or did he take it? We know the gun was not reported stolen. Prosecutor McDonald says there has to be tougher gun control laws in the state. We have got to address responsible gun ownership in this country and in Oakland County. Responsible gun ownership, including the security of a gun, is an absolute imperative to protect our community today and in the future, and those who do not do that should be and will be held accountable. And uh, we learned from the sheriff this afternoon that the school officials did actually have a meeting with the suspect and his parents the day before the shooting and the day of the shooting. Wow. So we're going to get into that okay. coming up tonight at 6. All right. Thank you, Carla. I don't know if you can tell behind me, we're, this is the football field behind me. And one of the victims of this shooting yesterday was 16-year-old Tate Muir. He was a football player. He was a junior. He played on the Oxford High School football team. More than 60,000 people so far have already signed an online petition for this stadium here at the high school to be named after him. The petition calls him a hero, saying he was killed in an attempt to disarm the shooter. Those signing the petition say his, quote, act of bravery should be remembered forever. And this story is really hitting home for schools in West Michigan as well. The Rockford athletic director, Cole Andrews, previously served as the Oxford athletic director. Now, he says he was in a meeting yesterday when all of this unfolded. His phone started going off. Andrews knows many of the coaches still working here in Oxford High School and says he has spent the day reaching out to them and touching base with them and saying a prayer for everyone involved. Oxford is very, very similar to Rockford and a lot of communities in West Michigan. Uh, great kids, great community, great administration, um, teaching staff there is great, coaching staff there is great. Um, just a horrible thing and just been something hard to wrap your mind around. And it just, you know, your heart sinks. I mean, a lot of my coaches 
and the hallway happened were in there and I was in that hallway a lot. My kids were, my family was in that school a ton and um, it's just, uh, it's been a bizarre 24 hours. And Now, in light of this tragedy here in Oxford State, Michigan State Police want to remind everyone that there is a confidential tip line that they have. It is called OK to Say. Now, this free online resource is a prevention based reporting system that encourages everyone to submit any tip of threatening behavior. In fact, in 2020, OK to Say lodged almost 4,000 tips. 52 of those were tips planned for school attacks. Now, these tips are sent directly to MSP's Operations Center and then technicians relay information straight to the appropriate local authorities. The program's administrator, Mary Geiger-Drew, says they hope this resource will continue to be used by communities all over Michigan. Okay to say is not about getting kids in trouble. Okay to say is about getting kids the resources they need before situations turn tragic. Now, she, she did not say if this particular shooting here in Oxford was reported to okay to say. Now, we will have much more on the OK to Say app coming up on 13 on your side at 6 o'clock. And also, our coverage of the deadly shooting here in Oxford continues throughout our 90 minutes. You can also get the latest information on our website, 13onyourside.com.